any conversation about motion control has to talk about servo systems. So now we're going to talk about what is a servo system. I'm Corey Foster at Valen Corporation. Reach out to us at this email address and website here. Let's see what we can learn. First off, let's define control versus regulation. Control is an input that alters an output, like a light switch. You turn it on, the light goes on. Regulation is more about a control variable that is measured continuously and compared with a target value. So if there's something wrong and if there's an error, a deviation occurs, it's corrected or adjusted properly. So you have a set point and then you have an actual value and you have feedback coming back to it, like temperature control. So that's where you have an input, you have an output, you have feedback that gets makes the input adjust itself. So a basic servo drive has an amplifier and it has an input and output and feedback. Here comes the command, there's the feedback, and we've talked about feedback devices for a number of episodes. You can check these episodes out at another time. The difference between the command and the feedback gives an error. That command error goes into the amplifier and that creates the output. We have a summing junction, an amplifier, and that gives just the most basic servo drive. So the command comes into the amplifier, it goes to the motor. There's a feedback device on the back of the motor typically, could be elsewhere, but typically is on the back of the motor. That provides information back to the summing junction, and there you have it. Why do I need that feedback? Let's take a look at a ball screw actuator that has a load on it. And here's a linear encoder. Again, this is not on the back of the motor, but it could be. But this is easier to understand that there's a, a linear encoder on here. So if this is the distance and this is the desired travel as it goes over time, uh, perhaps it doesn't quite actually get there uh, because there is... A, and there's an actual load travel, and there's some mechanical backlash, and that creates an error between the actual load travel and the desired load travel. So that feedback gives us an opportunity to adjust for that. But there's more than just one servo loop. There's actually three. So the most basic one is really down at the chip level. It's inside the drives, typically. There's a torque command that comes in here, and it has the torque error. And this is measured internally. This is the current sensor, making sure that the right amount of current is going to the motor. Okay, so that is the current loop. Well, that goes inside this, this torque loop here, but that goes inside the velocity loop. The velocity loop uses this torque loop to make sure that it is giving the right amount of velocity to the motor, that is receiving the right amount of velocity from the motor. This velocity loop goes inside the position loop. And so when there's a position command, we have to make sure that we're getting the velocity velocity and the torque needed in order to get that position. So the sensor on the motor then comes back to the position command and gives that amplifier uh, the command it needs. So you can see how in order to get to the right position, like in a car, you need to make sure you're going the right velocity. In order to go the right velocity, you need to make sure you're getting the right torque or power out of your car. Thinking about how you're driving it, that's exactly what you're doing. It might look like this, you know, so here is the torque loop, and then here is the velocity loop, and then on the outside of that is the position loop. Same idea, just shown a little bit differently all in one triple loop here. All right, so let's take a look at, there's a couple different types of signals. There's the torque and velocity control. Here's that same graphic. There's an analog input typically into here. That analog input historically has been plus or minus 10 volts. So here's the torque amplifier, here's the minus 10 volts, here's the positive 10 volts, and it's a linear relationship between that voltage and the torque. So if this is zero volts, this is zero torque, at plus 10 volts, you get positive uh, clockwise torque, at negative 10 volts, you get a negative torque in the counterclockwise direction, either in ounce inches or newton meters. Well, the same, thing applies for the velocity, except it's not in torque, it's actually in, in velocity. So this is plus or minus 10 volts. Positive 10 volts is clockwise velocity. Zero is zero velocity. And then minus 10 volts is the negative velocity, typically defined as the counterclockwise direction. So that's the torque and the velocity. 
Now, position is a little bit different. The position control isn't an analog signal historically going in here. It's actually a digital signal. Uh, one of those types of signals is actually a step and direction. So one pulse for every step to turn. And then there's the direction, which defines whether it's going you know, clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, in more modern drives, there's actually you know bus-based, and there's different types of digital signals. But this is just a historical understanding of what a basic amp amplifier is. All right, so let's take a look at position control. If this is a constant velocity here on the top of this trapezoid, here's the acceleration. It ramps up and then it decelerates down. So over time, this is the desired response. And maybe this is representative of the actual uh, response, but this is before tuning. Now, a servo system needs to be tuned. Now, it might have tuning in it by default, but it has to be tuned. And it, it permits the customization of that system response by tuning the algorithms, because you might want to prioritize a high responsiveness uh, versus settling time, something like that. So there's several different gains in a servo system typically that need to be tuned. And once you adjust those parameters, you might get a better response here where there's only a little lag time here, a little overshoot, and then it settles and it performs much better. But there are sometimes reasons to have to detune a little bit because it might be the sound or you know might be a, a cause of vibration. So you can over tune a system. But that is the difference between an untuned system and a, a properly tuned system. All right, so there's a couple different configurations of servo systems. Again, here is the basic servo loop. Now, that motor, the feedback on that motor can go back to the motion controller. And here, here's the HMI, here's the motion controller, here's the drive. And this is where the servo loop is closed at the motion controller. Well, in more modern systems, it's actually more typical to have that servo loop closed at the drive because there might be EtherCAT or um, you know, Ethernet power link or some other uh, bus base in between the motion controller and the drive. They're called smart drives these days. But it, this architecture has been around for a long time where the feedback goes back to the drive and the servo loop is closed at the amplifier. Well, you still have all the control done here at the motion controller and the drive still is just this amplifier and, and this drive here but you can see in the first one the feedback goes back to the motion control it goes into the peak region and here it goes just into the teal region just back to the drive in both cases the motion controller and the amplifier can be packaged into one unit that doesn't change it's just a matter of how the circuitry and everything is done inside that one drive all right a position tracking system is not a servo system. Okay, let's take a, another quick, quick look at the closed loop positioning. Okay, this is what we've been talking about where the feedback goes back to a summing junction and then the error of that goes to the amplifier. That is closed loop. And the main thing here is that the desired motor position is compared with the actual motor position to determine an error. And then that is used to command the motor. Okay, a position tracking system, however, the feedback goes back to some counter and then it goes to the command and later on in the move it might make an adjustment. So you command the motor to perform a desired move, the counter measures the actual distance traveled by the counting the encoder pulses, during the move the stalls or excessive following errors can be detected, the motor expects to see a certain actual position at each velocity, it makes an adjustment, it's much slower it's done at the end of the move typically, whereas this is done constantly and inherently during a servo loop update. So position tracking is a little bit less expensive, a little bit lower performing. When you say a stepper is closed loop, oftentimes it's just position tracking. However, these days there are closed loop steppers that are truly closing the loop, much more like servo systems. In some cases, they're just playing games with uh, tracking the encoder and, and doing some things internally. It's all transparent to the user, but there's a kind of a difference between position tracking and servo systems. And some of it's just marketing. Another couple quick things here. Here's an analog servo drive. These are less expensive and um, sometimes easier to use, but they've been around for a long, long time. You can see that there's just resistors and you know there's capacitors and stuff in there just in order to control the signals. Uh, definitely lower cost, typically. Uh, digital 
servo drives have to use a microprocessor instead, and then there's a digital to analog converter in order to actually control the current. They come with automatic or even self-tuning uh, servo loop systems, much more versatile usually because it can accept both the step and direction digital signals as well as the analog inputs for both torque and velocity drives. So sometimes that same drive can be used in multiple modes. Uh, this allows them to have the step and direction inputs for step or motor replacements, uh, which can be transparent to the PLC or their controller. It brings more capability, more control, but oftentimes comes with a higher price tag. Just the difference between an inexpensive servo drive and a more expensive servo drive. There are definitely newer methods for uh, control. And here, this is marketing from one particular manufacturer that has a stepper that they say has a closed loop stepper. Under normal conditions, it operates in an open loop control for the same ease of use as a, as a stepper motor. And so this is showing a stepper motor with a sensor on it that has a deviation or position tracking uh, counter in it. But then it switches to a closed loop control during the overload for a more reliable operation like a servo motor. And so they say here that it's going to be more servo-like when it gets into an overload situation. But notice here it says for more reliable operation like a servo motor. It's not claiming that it is a servo motor, but it has a couple of different modes. So again, you know, these are some of the areas you get into with the newer systems and what um, you know people do with chips and, and software and programming internally. So I hope that helps. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. Reach out to us if you have any questions. Here at this email address and website. We're always happy to help.